Ladies and gentlemen, we will continue with case reports from practice. We've been talking so much about fasting, and I'd like to go into more detail about what we understand in terms from Buchinger and the AGHE. Fasting is to do without food and drink for a certain period of time. With Buchinger fasting, you have drinks, beverages, um, juices, vegetable broth, tea and honey, approximately 250 to 300 calories and approximately three liters of water are important from our point of view because uric acid values increase. Also herbal infusions are suitable. Then we have salt, um, enemas, liver packing, and also magnesium, vitamins, and we have individual therapeutic exercise, physiotherapy, psychotherapy, and the therapy is adapted individually. Our first case is a long-term documentation, an obese person, a 68-year-old lawyer who's retired, and here's the problem that his wife is an archaeologist and they go on many um, trips and he enjoys eating and when he returns from these trips he's he has always gained weight. He also has diabetes and this is the medication he takes, metformin, natiglinide, um, allopurinol and other supplements. The first time he came was in 2004 and he weighed 135 kilograms and then he came annually. He had an H P a 1C value of 9.1, vitamin D was 7.5, um, uric acid was too high, and in 2011 he returned annually, we had 23 days of fasting, usually he fasted annually, and also in 2012 he returned, he was lost weight, um, waist circumference went down. And in 2013, 2014, he noticed that it wasn't enough to come once a year. And we recommended him to come more frequently, and he came in February 2014, in June and October, and then in January 2015. And he went down to 102 kilograms. His waist circumference went down. HbA1c value was also quite good. 2015 then, he came three times, in 2016 twice, in 2017 he came for the 20th time, but then here in March 2016 he had a tooth extraction and an ankle joint distortion and couldn't exercise as he used to. So that's why weight increased again. He'd been by 100, at 116 kilograms, and it went up. Then he came regularly, and for the 20th time. Then he came again in December 2017. 2018, he came three times, and 2019 twice, where he fasted for 11 days, and his back to 107 kilograms, his abdominal girth went to 112, and vitamin D substitutes um, he received, and also his uric acid is good, and he's already um, booked to stay for August and November 2019. I think people who are um, obese or overweight don't want to do without certain things, and they can benefit from fasting several times, two to three times a year. And the duration, this is something that can be defined individually. But I only see advantages here because the people are motivated and every time again they think about what they can improve, um, how they can improve their health status over a long time. Our case number two is a documentation of two stays. That is a 64-year-old female patient 
she has Crohn's disease. She's had that since 1975. She was operated twice. Last operation was in 2004, and nearly the entire colon has been removed. And af even after that removal, she still had some Crohn in herself. Then she also had a mammary carcinome. There was an axilla evacuation after metastasis. In 2015, she had a breast operation, cosmetic operation, um, without any long-term um, problems. In 2018, she came because she had frequent defecation up to 15 times per day when she was stressed, and she also had the fatigue syndrome. And then you can say, well, why do you let someone like that fast? She hasn't even got a gut anymore. How, how's that going to work? She came in February 2018, spent six days fasting. She came with 67 kilograms, went down to 63 kilograms. Abdominal girth reduced. Um, body mass index was normal. Vitamin D was too la low. That was substituted. And after her stay, she had physical and mental well-being as she'd never had it before, or even 15 years before. And it was just... Genial, as she says in French. She had a very st strong um, fatigue syndrome that improved until October um, when her daughter had a child and she was a bit stressed. Then her condition worsened. She still had some Crohn's disease in her, in the rest of her gut. She received salufalc and some vitamins. She came back in February 2019, six days of fasting, reduced weight again, um, also circumference, and it was good fasting progress, and she went home with a very good state of health. Then we have a third case, a 75-year-old businessman. He was also here several times. He had a chronic lymphatic leukemia in 2013, uh, chemotherapy, from January to June 2017, and he had a prostate carcinoma with a total prostatectomy in 2002, but that was no problem anymore. And he came in November 2017. He had his chemotherapy till June, and we were not sure how quickly you recover after this chemotherapy and how quickly can you fast. He was overweight at 93.6 kilograms and did 21 days of fasting. Weight went down to 84.4 kilograms. Abdominal girth, I didn't measure the second time. He started at 110. And BMI was in pre-adipose state. So that also improved and vitamin D was filled up. And he had low coenzyme Q10. That should be around 800, but we supplemented that because it's important. Um, for the function and also to um, for the tumor cells to reduce. In terms of fasting, everything went well, but in, he had slight hyponatremia. We have a device where you can see the um, sodium levels, and if they're too low, you get sodium tablets, salt tablets, and that can easily be um, substituted. Instituted. He returned in February 2019 with a 19-day fast. He um, lost weight again. He lives in Switzerland, in Tessin, and had too much food, too much good food, but it was a risk um, that this abdominal um, fat is a risk, and he lost weight. Also, the body mass index improved. He didn't take vitamin D all the time. We filled that up. And here again, he had a hyponatremia, and we said next time he comes, we're going to give we're going to give him salt tablets right from the start, that he doesn't get into this critical state. Then we ask ourselves, can elderly patients fast? That was also a question today. Up to which age can you fast? This is a lady who's been with us 20 times. She's 84 years old. She has polyarthrosis and problems with her joints, high blood pressure, hypertension, migraine that is weather-dependent, and pre-obesity. She takes 
Tell me Sartan for her blood pressure, atorvastatin for cholesterol, and aspirin cardio. In January 2017, she had a stay with us. Those are the last four stays. Um, here she fasted eight days, in February nine days, in January 2018, eight days, and in March 2019, nine days. She came because she wanted to play with her grandchildren or had played with her grandchildren and her joints were aching. She said she's got to do something. She wants to fast again to have um, less pain. She lost weight from 74 to 70 kilograms, abdominal girth was reduced, blood pressure went down, and on the fifth day she could do without the tel misatan. At home she will have to measure and take it when she needs it. And BMI was measured and there were no problems of any kind. In 1990 she had a severe accident, several knee operations, a total endoprosthesis in left 2008, right 2010. Then she had some falls in 2014 and 2015 with persistent knee ache. And especially the weight gain, she noticed this and overexhausted um, when she played with her grandchildren. So with these regular annual fasting um, regimens, she had good improvement and pain relief. And also the migraine, especially during changing weather conditions, dis nearly disappeared completely over the years. So in six months, we had six, 86 patients over um, 80 years of age, and that worked without problems. Otto Buchinger said that this um, fasting for several weeks is the best way to heal chronic diseases. It's um, the Queen's Way, Via Regia. Usually people only have 10 days time um, nowadays, so they can't fast for such a long period. I want to point out one aspect. We have a natural therapy background, so we also look at the specific effects. What can heal people? What makes them healthy? We have, for example, fasting therapy, phytotherapy, acupuncture, and those are the specific therapy approaches that have an effect. But research says up to 75% are um, unspecific factors. They also play a part. That is the therapeutic setting. Here we have the Swiss mountains, the lake, the beautiful clinic. Perhaps you have um, a good surgery. Um, you can go on beautiful hikes in the nature. Then we have the employees, whether they are empathic, whether they um, provide encouragement, information. Also, the patient and his approach, what expectations does he have, positive expectations, is he skeptical, does he want to change his way of life, lifestyle, and of course, pending questions and research. If you notice um, that fasting is not bad for the cardiac muscle, that it improves your mood and that you're more resistant to stress, more resilient afterwards, then that helps the patient to get healthy in the end. So it's not only the specific effect of fasting, but the overall picture that counts. And now Dr. ritzmann Widerich is going to give her presentation and present more cases. Thank you. Can you hear me? Is the microphone working? Is okay? Yes? Okay, great. And I got the pointer, great. We heard a lot about theories today about fasting and other things. And now I'd like to show you how we use this knowledge in our everyday practice. I brought some case reports from our general practice. I'm a general practitioner together with my husband, and we have become a specialized practice for nutritional science. I have a specialized practice for nutrition, nutritional science, as Professor Wexler already told us before. 
We also have psychologists and sports therapists who work with us in our programs, and I usually use different things depending on the needs. The first case I would like to present is a 67-year-old patient. She came to us for the first time in July 2018, and she reported that she had suffered from polymyositis since puberty with pain in her upper arms and upper legs, and she was treated with corticoids and methotrexate. She discontinued prednisolone in January 2018 because she had suffered from hair loss and depressive mood swings. But then the inflammation activities went up and the pain increased, and for that reason she continued with the medication again. She had currently taken 6 milligrams, but she wasn't free of symptoms. Then the second problem it was the colitis that she had suffered from for 20 years with watery um, diarrhea. We always do stool examinations of the microbiome as well and measure the inflammation. It was more than 500, the calproctin and the A180 was 62 and dysbiosis. Then the problem three was at um, obesity level one with a BMI th of 31. I accepted her because she had told me that she had been practicing intermittent fasting for the past two years. She was a retired teacher and she told me that she would always do without breakfast. So 16.8 because she wanted to lose weight, but that she hadn't lost weight for the past two years. And for that reason, she changed her diet. I tell people you can do 16-8, but if you really want to lose weight, you have to somehow reduce the calories you take in, otherwise this won't work. Once or twice a week at least, I'm asked by patients about the 16-8 approach, also thin people, slim people who say, I feel better, they're not losing weight, but they feel better. If you really want to lose weight, then in my experience, you have to reduce the number of calories you take in. She said, well, we snack here and there, uh, some berries here and uh, drink there. So only once she started to change her nutrition, her diet, she lost weight. But because of the 16-8 diet, that did not change the other pain or other complaints. She also suffered from hypotonia and she took four different drugs for the hypotonia. What did we do? We restored the healthy um, intestinal flora. We always do this, so we had a call on hydrotherapy and pro prebiotics, and we changed the nutrition, of course. This is very important. Anti-inflammatory, so very little arachidonic acid, lots of omega-3 fat acids, and um, probiotic, base balanced, rich in fiber, and milk protein at the beginning. Very often people don't know that this works, but it works quite well, at least for some time. The supplemented with micro, we supplement micronutrients depending on the results of the measurement and omega-3 fatty acids. How did this continue? The intestinal disorders improved. She had no diarrhea anymore, just some flatulence. When she ate some um, dairy products, she still had some problems with that, but the pain in her locomotor system remained. Until January 19, she lost 14 kilograms just because of her changed diet. But the the pain in her legs and in her arms did not decrease, it remained unchanged. In fall, I already told her to um, participate in the fall fasting treatments, and she wasn't convinced. Sometimes it's really difficult to convince people to fast. I told her, we will take care of you, we will monitor everything to make sure you will be safe. But people find it hard to say yes to such a drastic measure, because it's not that easy. So in May 2019, I finally convinced her because the pain didn't go away and she wanted to get rid of the cortisol, of course, of the cortisone. And she finally decided to participate in a fasting group. And after three days only, the pain in her legs was less. And after five days, it was completely gone. And also when she transitioned back to normal diet, 
she still didn't feel the pain. The pain in her arms was less, but it was not completely gone. She had the intention of fasting longer, but then someone died in her family, someone passed away, and she had to travel. And then after five days, she stopped the fasting. But those five days already helped and allowed her to sleep again and to not suffer from pain. She said, I'm finally sleeping through the night again. I always woke up during the night because of my pain. I would only be able to walk for one kilometer. Now I can walk for five kilometers and I sleep so well. She had lost 19 kilograms by then, including those fasting days. The blood pressure drugs were cut in half and we discontinued the cortisone. Now she doesn't need it anymore. She visited me this week and she's doing well. She's still not suffering from intestinal disorders or problems and she's her state of well-being is really good. I asked her to come back for a longer fasting period in fall because we offer that to groups several times a year and I also have individual people fasting but then I only see them if they have special questions. Usually they learned how to fast in a group and I think if she continues fasting for a bit longer her arms will also get better. She won't feel that pain anymore. But she's so happy that she can walk again and sleep again. And also after she transitioned back to normal food, it um, stayed the same. Here we also do indirect kilometry, as we call it. If you look at the uh, resting metabolic rate, then that was 183. And after that, she was at 1,000. Three. So she didn't really change her um, resting metabolic rate. It almost stayed the same, but people are afraid they would enter the ketosis, of course, but then you have the sticks and people who move more. Uh, well, the, with them it's different, but it's interesting to look at the values to see whether, whether our theories are right or not. Then I brought a second case report. A woman who's 46 years old, she came to me for the first time in February 2019. She had suffered from rheumatoid arthritis for many, many years, and she has episodes during winter times with pain and restricted movement in her toe joints. She only took NSAR, but the pain didn't go away. And she didn't want to take stronger medication. When she visited me for the first time, she still felt pain in her toes, but she didn't take any drugs. And she told me that she also had many infections and that she wasn't capable of working for a longer period of time, so there were quite some restrictions, and she was also overweight. She wanted to me because she wanted to learn about the nutritional therapy because she saw something in TV, a documentary that's called Nutritional Docs. Maybe you've seen it already. Um, our specialized practice is usually mentioned in those TV shows, and this is why people find us and come to us. So she wanted to have a nutritional therapy. And of course, she changed her nutrition. She went to our diet assistant to explain to her how to do this step by step. Then, of course, again, um, to restore healthy gut microbiomes with a diet that was rich in fiber and alkaline. Then she took part in a fasting group for the first time in May 2019, and after five days, her joint pain was gone. Her husband was there as well, and he said, this is unbelievable. She can walk longer distances again. She couldn't walk anymore with her kids, and that didn't work. And now she can walk, and she could even walk bare feet. That didn't work for a long time because her joints hurt so much. And then I saw her again one month later and she was still free of pain. Sometimes they return um, to have more counseling in terms of their nutrition until they have really changed their behavior and then you only see them at larger frequencies, but with her it worked quite well. Then there was another patient that I already introduced to you two years ago. This is a woman again, 39 years old. She came in 2017 for the first time and she told me that since 2003 she had annual episodes and a chronic inflammatory bowel disease. 
So it was Crohn's disease and colitis ulcerosa in the rectum. And every year, she, for three to four months, she had strong episodes with bloody diarrhea. She took mesalacine and cortisone for three to four months, and she felt quite restricted. So she came too fast because she heard that this would help with her problem. Again, we restored a healthy gut microbiome microbiomes and we changed her nutrition. In March 2017, she was symptom-free. Then the episodes usually happened in summer. Then she took part in a fasting group for seven days for the first time. And in that year, she had no episode. And then she continued with the nutrition we recommended. She fasts independently one to two times a year since then. And I talked to her recently, and until now, she has not suffered from any episodes, and she's doing very well. So these are the cases where I think the nutrition plays such a vital role. And we don't give it the attention it deserves in typical medicine. And thanks to Professor Wexler, um, this will be part of the further education training for doctors. And hopefully, all doctors will learn about this topic more and understand that we can do more with nutrition in some cases than we can do with pharmaceutical products. Or at least we could reduce drugs to also reduce side effects. Because very often, people come to us because they are so bothered by the side effects than they are by the problem that they want to fight with those drugs. I don't know how many colleagues are here today who have never tried fasting. You should try this for yourself for one week, or um, you could also go to the Kurpak clinic and um, spend a week doing therapeutic fasting. This is where doctors are being trained and in the context of the Central Association of Naturopaths, we also organize a seminar once a year to explain how fasting is organized, how we deal with problems and issues, how you um, can then invoice it with the insurance company. So if you haven't tried it for yourself, then you should do that. I'd like to encourage you to really experience that for yourselves before you recommend it to your patients. You just have to have the courage to do it and then try it for yourself. You can achieve so many things and you can also attend a training for a nutritional um, doctor. Of course, we have great trainers who offer trainings for fasting. I work with those specialists as well because I can't do everything myself. Just, well, go for it. Try it yourself. Experience it yourself because it's so much more fun acting as a doctor when you include those elements. I would like to ask Laura to the stage because she would want to she wanted to make a short statement as well. She's in the Buchinger Clinic at the moment and she's gonna explain to you in a few words what she's been doing with us. Can you hear me? Ladies and gentlemen, it was a rather spontaneous decision to speak here. And in reference to the previous speakers, I am a case report myself, and I'd like to take some time to present my own case. My name is Laura Junge. I'm 29 years old, and I have a long path of suffering behind me. When I think back, I get emotional. I try to stay calm, but I will keep it short. Since I was born, I've suffered from neurodermitis all over my body, and it worsened over the years. When you are a teenager, you manage to hide it somehow, but I think I speak on behalf of everyone. If you suffer from a skin disease that you feel um, that you suffer a lot, I went from one dermatologist to the next. I know all of the creams and all of the medication and nothing helped. I would not be here if the following hadn't happened. It was a coincidence that 
I talked to my doctor at the army and I found a practice for nutritional science and if you have suffered that much for so long then I think you would do anything. I was quite skeptical regarding fasting and nutrition, but I thought, what choice do I have? If nothing else is helping, then why should I not try something new? So I started fasting, and I have to tell you that my first fasting phase wasn't the easiest one and the most comfortable one, but what was triggered afterwards and the physical changes that have happened since are unbelievable. Of course, nutrition to me is important because without nutrition, I would never be where I am with only fasting. I didn't bring any pictures that I can show you, unfortunately. So I fasted twice a year on a regular basis. I changed my nutrition and my condition got so much better. And I thought, wow, this is just incredible. So I also started to study. I study I'm studying medical nutritional science at the University of Lübeck. And I feel the inner urge to tell others about what I've experienced and encourage them because I know exactly what you feel like when you're a patient and when you hear about fasting for the first time and when you're skeptical. I'm in my sixth semester now. I'm writing my bachelor uh, bachelor thesis on autophagy and fasting and I would also like to create awareness among the young generation as well so I have a blog where I published my story and I also use the social media to raise interest raise awareness of this topic because many people don't believe in fasting or don't dare trying it and for that reason I said I want to tell you about my story and tell you from the patient's perspective that fasting and the two human beings who um, brought me on this path gave me a second life. Thank you very much.